What's up guys, Justin here with TheSketchupEssentials.com back with another SketchUp Essentials tutorial for you. So this, or today, this tutorial is going to be a little bit different and then we're going to change the way that we approach modeling um, to do kind of more of a high level sketch like an early architectural sketch, that kind of thing. And we're going to use styles to help us out with that. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. So uh, I think a lot of you guys are kind of like me in that you like to get really precise with your modeling and that kind of thing. What we're going to do is we're going to completely mix this up and we're going to use styles to come in here and do kind of a high level sketch of a building. So kind of like a preliminary sketch, like if you were an architect and you were kind of feeling out the way the space was going to come together, that kind of thing. So we're going to use styles in order to do that. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to come over here to the styles section of our tray. So if you can't see the tray, you want to go to window, default tray, and click on show tray. And you want to make sure styles is checked over here. What we're going to do is we're going to click the select box and then we're going to come in here and we're going to click this little drop down right here and you're going to go down to the sketchy edges styles so click on those and that's going to give you a whole bunch of different um, style types in here so you've got everything from marker you've got pen in here you've got just kind of scribble all that different kind of stuff brush strokes um, all of these things are really good for kind of like high level modeling what we're, what we're gonna do for now is we're gonna select the marker wide option and what that's gonna do is that's gonna completely change the way that your workspace looks so you can see how the default model is in here and it looks completely different right like all the lines are thicker this basically looks like you came in here and you drew it with a marker and as you zoom out, you see how everything gets a little bit fuzzier. Um, that has to do with the edge settings and uh, the way the stroke looks and the profiles and all that different stuff. But what we're going to do is we're going to come in here and we're just going to model something real quick. And one quick thing to note is when you come in here and you do things with styles, all of these can be changed back. So all this does is this affects the way the lines and the faces and everything look in your model. So you're not changing anything permanently. You can just go back to the default style and get your regular model back in here as well. So none of these are permanent changes they just affect the way your model looks and uh, first thing I'm gonna do because this gets a little confusing for me you can see how if I rotate around you can't see what's up and what's down and all of that different kind of stuff so to help us out we're gonna go up to view and click axes and then you can see how you can get in here and your axes are still in here so you can kind of see what's up and what's down and that kind of thing and so you can turn those on for a little while and then turn them back off. The, the whole idea of this is to go in here and sketch something um, super high level. So we're going to go ahead and just delete out the default model. And we're really just going to kind of come in here and we're just going to kind of detail some stuff out. Is all we're, gonna, or we're just going to kind of feel out some shapes. So we're just going to draw some rectangles, push-pull those. Um, into 3d and basically what we're trying to do is we're, we're kind of trying to create some shapes to just kind of get some get the feel of how a space kind of comes together and I will say that I am NOT an architect or anything like that but I, I feel like sometimes I should just uh, when I'm working with my models get a little bit more high level with them and not worry so much about the details but you can see how the nice thing about modeling like this is you can come in here and you can use the same tools that you do everywhere else like the push pull tool works the offset tool works so you can come in here and offset stuff the other nice thing about doing stuff this way is you can basically come in here and you can use the lines a little bit more to um, kind of sketch some stuff out so you can see how since the lines are thicker they affect this a little bit more so like when you have your regular styles in here and you draw a line uh, it doesn't necessarily I'm not sure what the best way is to describe it, but basically you've just got a little bit more feel to this object right here. And so you can see how I'm just kind of coming in here and I'm just kind of, I'm just kind of um, filling in some spaces. I'm kind of detailing out a roof. I've got kind of a window over here, but you can see how fast and easy it is to come in here and do this. So, and I, again, I'm just using the same kind of tools that I have before, the rectangle tool, um, all that different kind of stuff. You can just kind of come in here and just draw your lines. You can erase stuff out. I mean, it's really easy to come in here and add different details and stuff like that. What we're going to do in a little while is we're going to come in here and we're going to add a couple materials just to make this a little bit more... We're going to come in here and we're, we're going to add some materials just to kind of uh, 
see what those do to our look. Again, this is this is really kind of a very high level type model where we're just gonna come in here and just kind of create a space and see what we can do with it. So like for example, if I come in here and I detail out like a door, for example, you know, you can see how I've got kind of this general space in here. Well, now what, we, what you can do with this is you can come in here and you can kind of add some materials. So like for example, I'm gonna add some glass over here and you can see how right now the materials aren't showing up very well. You can come in here and you can mess around with those over here in your uh, settings. So you can come over to here to edit. You can go to your face settings and you can click on these and depending on the level of detail you want, um, it'll either shade them in or like if I was to do something like, let's say I went with a, do we have like a vertical metal? Yeah, there we go. So if I have like a vertical metal, I can either click on this little box right here and that'll just shade that. Or you can actually click on this and it'll actually display the panel material. So part of that's just kind of depends on the look that you're going for. But another great thing for this kind of modeling is you can come in here to patterns. So the patterns are great because they're more uh, they're more hand drawn looking. So like for example, I'd probably come in here and I'd use these on this face instead of like an actual detailed out um, panel piece to give this kind of some interest and that kind of thing. But you can see how there's different there's different materials in here. There's like stone materials, there's like ashlar stone, uh, different kind of stuff that you can use to kind of detail some of this out to kind of feel out some materials while still keeping this like quick hand-drawn kind of look. So when you can treat these kind of the same as you would any other material, so like for example, if I come in here and I select this running rectangles that I put on here, you can edit that material so that they're bigger or smaller. So like for example, I can come in here and change the size. So these are at like six inches or 12 inches or whatever I want to adjust kind of the size of the way that these look. So you can come in here and you can kind of adjust your look in that way. So, and then you can also come here with some of these and you can kind of change the color. So you can see how this siding option, for example, if you come in here, that's kind of set to yellow. Well, if you just kind of drag this over in the color wheel, you can set it to more of a white instead of a yellow. Um, so you can kind of adjust the way that those look to get the look that you're going for in here. And again, this is a completely different kind of modeling. So you're not coming in here and really trying to get super detailed with it. You're trying to get kind of a quick feel for the space. So this is a really great way to just kind of sketch something out really fast to get kind of an idea of what something looks like. So, and then the other nice thing about this is you can still come in here with things like the shadows and adjust the way that everything looks. So if I come in here and I turn the shadows on in the shadows section of my tray, I can still apply the shadows in the same way that I would to everything else. So you can use that to kind of stylize the way that this looks as well and also get kind of an idea of the way that the sun would fall with a certain shape. So you could try out different things like if you wanted to, for example, come in here and figure out what this would do to your shading if uh, you kind of extended this piece out a little bit. You could do that. So if I push pull this face up a little bit, like let's say you wanted to feel out what kind of shading you'd get. If you put something like this across here, what you could do is you could just draw this in and then you could kind of push, push pull it in and out to see how far out it would have to go um, in order to actually shade this door the proper way. So you can see how that shadow is kind of adjusting in real time right here. So again, it's just another thing where you can come in here and say, okay, if I wanted to shade this window, this would have to go all the way over here. So it's a really great way for feeling out architectural options really fast. And you can see how I can tell like, okay, I don't necessarily need to hang this out quite as far. So you can adjust this to try different options and that kind of thing really quick. You could also move this wall back and forth to see like how much that affects this space. So it's a real quick way to come in here and feel out different architectural options and that kind of thing. So, and then the other thing you could do if you wanted to is you could also come in here with different colors. So if you didn't like those hand-drawn materials, for example, and you just wanted to come in here with some different colors to indicate some things, you could definitely do that as well. So, I mean, the nice thing about this is it acts like a regular SketchUp model does. So, I mean, you can literally come in here, like if I wanted to, I could use the follow me tool to create a shape the same way that I would without this style turned on. It just kind of adjusts the way that it looks. So you can see how that worked kind of the same way. 
where it just came in here and drew that really fast. You know, and then same kind of thing, you could come in here and you could start detailing out like sidewalks or something like that as well. So if you wanted to kind of draw this shape in and then come in here with the material and add like a, like a hand-drawn paver look or something like that out of here, you could definitely do that as well. So same kind of thing, you could come in here and draw this in like it was more of a brick texture type thing. And then the other cool thing about this is you could also come in here and you can also come in here and you can import things from the 3D warehouse. So like for example, if I wanted like 2D plants. So you could come in here and you could search for like 2D plants and pull out like this SketchUp collection and go into the 2D plants just like this and pull some, uh, like let's say we pulled some little ground cover objects. Just like this, there are some sketchy options in here from SketchUp that you can download into your model. And you can just kind of drop those in here. And you could just kind of drop those in your space down here as well um, to get some kind of plants in here. So again, just a real quick, easy way to kind of create something and kind of feel it out. And you can come in here and you can adjust some of these settings too. So like, for example, you could turn profiles on and off. You know, if you were to turn the level of detail all the way on, so some of these settings um, affect how much of this is actually shown. So you can see how as I move the level of detail down, less stuff is showing up in these plants. So you can adjust the level of detail in here as well as some of the other pieces. So you can kind of feel that out. So it's all really quick and easy to adjust based on what you want to do with this. So that's where I'm going to end today's show. I just wanted to kind of go through and uh, show you a different way to model with SketchUp. So leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Um, I know it's a little bit different, but uh, I, kind of, I kind of like the idea of coming in here and doing sketches with SketchUp in addition to like detailed drawings. So, but I'd love to hear your opinion on that as well. Um, so leave that comment below. Uh, if you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing in this channel, please consider visiting my support me page at thesketchupessentials.com slash support. Um, that's got everything from links to extensions you can buy to, to uh, support the show and also links to my Patreon page. But um, in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.